person because Carl is not even right like he's 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 he's, he's a good character who wants the best for everyone he's, he's not sadistic or evil in any way right he's a decent honorable gentlemanly chap hello so, yeah. and welcome to the third video in a series i'm doing of DD related character which again just kind of generally includes a lot of fancy archetypes both different classes as well as species that are not just DD specifically but you know a, a little a little bit of everything <laughs> i say that though but you know the, thus far i've done a dwarf and two humans so i, I I could probably work on that diversity part. Anyway, in this video I am doing Carl the Imperial Sniper. This just so happens to be my own D&D character from a Warhammer campaign that is. And so since this is my own character, I have a, I have more or less complete creative freedom. And you know what I do when I have creative freedom? Absolutely nothing, because I like low fantasy, okay? Sue me. Anyway, this character is a rogue, but you should imagine it less as the stereotypical dual daggers assassin rogue and more kind of like a ranger, you know, a sniper who sneaks into towers and then just cowardly shoots people at a distance but that that's the concept anyway but yes let's get into it and as per usual at the end of the video i will have a brief dissection where i go over the the you know technical side of the model and how it was made as well all right so now it's my character's turn my uh we, we've got a lot of members of the party here at the call right now the important one is you know harry the dungeon master and then of course me since this is my character's video but uh because you know it's i'm the one doing the video they're all going to be grilling me i guess so uh yeah ask questions introduce yourself all right so my character is carl then ask for that uh, right okay yeah i'm oh right yeah okay sorry i i forgot that you know people don't know who i am uh <laughs> I'm I, I'm Durf. Uh, I play Carl. I play Carl. Nice. Yeah, that's distinct, succinct, not distinct. You're Durf and you play Carl. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Carl, what is his class? And what is his subclass? So, Carl is a rogue, very edgy. Uh, however, when I when I picked this class, I was actually debating between ranger and, and rogue because they, the entire point was kind of that I, I like. I, I, I just wanted to play a sniper. I, I didn't imagine like the, the edgy like double daggers assassin. I, even if it is an assassin rogue, that's the subclass. Uh, it was it was purely just with the intent of creating a as much of a sniper class as you can. Someone who shoots at far range and does a lot of damage in one hit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, it took you a while to get there. You had to play through fighter to figure out <laughs> you shoot people a lot. You just wanted to shoot people once. Uh, sorry to say, but champion fighter is a boring class. Like well, it's it's a Chad class, but it's a boring class. Don't have to worry about that anymore. Gunnar had to die. It's necessary. And the other one. We don't talk about Jean-Pierre. That pretty much covers why you also picked your class. Why you picked Rogue, because you've already experienced through the fighter. What you haven't done is given us a summary. Just go go through your character's backstory just quickly. Oh Tell boy. Us all about oh boy. Uh, yeah, so, you know, we're talking about a D&D &D rogue here, right? A D&D, &D, what, 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 what is a D&D &D rogue's typical backstory? Edgy. Yeah, yeah. Well, to be fair, I didn't actually, I didn't actually choose which family members died. That was the roles we did with, with Harry. But the, 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 the basics of it really came down to, uh, family lives on a farm, uh, sister goes crazy, uses fire magic to murder everybody. And now Carl is very sad and traumatized and he hates fire magic and magic in general how does he feel about we'll get to that later i'm just gonna keep that in mind yeah how, how did he get to the party from there since he's also a a staunch imperial loyalist uh and being a, a marksman from the army and everything these are just side notes in his backstory he was employed and and since since as i said this character my previous character died this character came in in the middle of the campaign and in in karlsbrook as, as we've heard of a few times now he he joined in the middle of it all uh, and he was basically just thrown in there as a plant he is assigned assigned by imperial officials to keep track of the ragtag party basically so he's not you could say he's not as much of a party member as a bystander who is checking in on them and trying to guide them and failing miserably. Uh, it's a piece of shit. Yes. <laughs> well, you've got a uh, party full of uh, magic users. How do you feel about them? Or how does Carl feel about them? What is, uh, how does he rest with the rest of the party being one of the only people unable to cast spells? Uh, only uh, person. Uh, yeah. How you doing, Normie? <laughs> <laughs> look, look. Carl 
as, as all edgy Warhammer Imperials in both 40k and in fantasy believes in the greater good. It's not true. Well, yeah, yeah well, whatever, 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 don't get into the details. Um, <laughs> the point is, you know, he might not like that they're using magic and he might be very distrustful of them and he might, like, contemplate, like, finding ways to get rid of Hamhunter's evil frying plan of destiny as well as possibly assassinating Varen every other day. But its um, he's a very rational and sensible and reasonable man uh, who is in his right mind and therefore he, doesn't <laughs> <laughs> therefore he doesn't do those things. Well, is there anybody in the party that he, is, uh, that he enjoys the company of more than others and people that he dislikes? Who does he hate? Uh, Varon. Mm. Look, the guy the guy was going to abandon the party. Not not Carl, but Varon was going to abandon the whole party in the middle of like the big boss fight, right? And then everybody just lets them off scot free. Like nobody brings it up again. Nobody cares that Varon was literally like trying to convince people to leave the fight and leave the injured people to die. Half of us were dying. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. And who does Carl like? Well, okay, so it's it, this there's three people that he likes. Particularly, the first one is Ham Hunch. He likes Ham Hunch because Ham Hunch is um, like he doesn't like Ham Hunch's frying pan, right? But he thinks that Ham Hunch is very. Um, he, th he thinks that Ham Hunch is a decent chap. Basically, he has no reason to like actually distrust or dislike him, and also he really likes his food. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's a chef. Sorrel. Carl likes Sorrel because Sorrel is kind of like the leader. It's like. Look, look, Carl doesn't want to lead the party himself, but he also has very specific ideas about what the party should do and where they should go. So his strategy is basically to, to try and tell Sir Raoul what Sir Raoul should tell everyone else to do. Hmm. <laughs> which doesn't which doesn't work very well generally, but you know, it's like it's Do I smell Grimma Worm tongue? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he's into politics. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I guess I, I, I guess Carl also likes Anya, even though Anya is like a sorcerer. Anya and Carl generally do tend to get along pretty well. Yeah. Uh, what does sure. he think about Tetria? Uh. Uh. <laughs> 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 irrational. Like fundamentally decent, good person who he respects for being a good person. Because Carl is not evil, right? Like he's, 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 he's a good character who wants the best for everyone. He's, he's not sadistic or evil in any way, right? He's a decent, honorable, gentlemanly chap. So he like, so he likes Tefra. but he thinks that she's kind of dangerous because she's like a bad influence on people like Sir Raoul, right? If he's trying to convince Sir Raoul to do the necessary thing, you know, then Tefra comes in and it's like, no, no, we must, we must protect the innocent and give our money to the beggars. Wow, that's so evil. Yep. Well, okay, okay, okay but, uh, okay, but that wasn't... <laughs> you dare mock me, Carl? Do I have to send you to Charlia myself? I would say. I have literally seen Carl loot a dead ally within like 10 seconds of her hitting the ground. He had to make sure that the coin was spent wisely. Mm. I guess you don't know my dwarf well enough to say that you like him or not. Well, yes. well, yeah, yeah ex ex exactly. Nice. Like, Brock, Brock is new to the party, right? So, but like, Brock, generally Carl likes dwarves. Like, in the Empire, dwarves tend to be pretty popular, as far as I know. But also, like, Brock is a fellow rifleman, sort of, which Carl can respect. So, you know, they've got that in common. So, like, at, off at the first offset, he does like Brock, but, like, he hasn't seen enough of Brock to really have a sincere opinion, you know? They also tortured a man together. Well... Yeah, the bomb. It was, it was for the greater good. <laughs> for the greater good. <laughs> yes, for the, for the greater good. Pretty good. What, what would you say? Is a good summary of Carl then. He is a he's a, he's a he, uh, no he's he's a decent, upstanding, reasonable, uh, very handsome, very charismatic, very friendly, nice, uh, and good person with a gun. And as they say in the Empire, the only person that can stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Oh, no. <laughs> No. <laughs> true, true. Do you wanna do you wanna sign us off then? Yeah. Okay. That was me. That was Carl, the best character in the group. Goodbye, everyone. And then you guys can also say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Captain Jeff's only fans. <laughs> <laughs>
So, here he is, Carl the Sniper, my own character. Now, as you can tell, this is fairly simple. It's very grounded, it's very down to earth, you know. Like, the, the, the uniform is obviously a little bit inspired by, you know, typical, like, Prussian military fashion. But although the unifor uniform might look simple, I've actually used some of my more advanced techniques with this. Because, you know, again, this is my character, so <laughs> I put a lot of effort into, into the detail. And things like the, these, these bullets sticking out here and here, as well as this shoulder pad here, all these things are, you know, hidden arms inside of this body, creating this uniform, creating this kind of silhouette. As you can see, the shoulders are very spiky, and again, that's because of these different layering things. So, before anything else, as per usual, the, the, the this pose is obviously a little bit stiff, and that is because <laughs> if you ever make top-down mods like this, let me just give you some advice, okay? Never ever make a character that has to use a long weapon, be it a rifle like this, or a halberd, or a spear, or a staff. They're just they're awful, okay? Like Anya, the character I made in the last video, was also meant to have a staff, but I, I just noped. I, I said no, she's, she's not having a staff. Because you can't make a model of it, because the, the the staff has nowhere to go, there's no space for it, like, you literally can't. But you know, obviously, since Carl is meant to look like this from top down, and since it is kind of essential to Carl to have a rifle, seeing as he is, you know, a sniper, I didn't have much choice. I did, at one point, try and put it on his back, etc., but it didn't really help either. But yes, that does kind of result in his pose being very stiff, you know, I had to work on this pose very meticulously. I know it looks really, really simple, there's nothing impressive about this pose, but at the same time, this took me over an hour to make just because I had to sit here and stare at this model from top down for again and again and again and again just trying to get the right pose trying to make sure that this character would be just the right size compared to the other models but simultaneously holding a rifle and it being clear from above anyway as is tradition let's pull this model apart real quick and see how cursed this looks oh oh dear yeah so <laughs> yeah yeah uh uh, yeah, here's here's Carl without eyebrows, and here's uh, old Carl with no eyes. So a few things you'll notice immediately is one of my favorite layering combinations is this like dualist fencer's tunic with this biker jacket here, which creates this combination of like a, it gives this nice like biker color to the to the actual fencer's tunic. And another thing you'll notice if I remove the decal kit bashing on this, a lot of things go wrong actually. So I'm gonna click it up on the extra model and then on the main model and as you'll see what we lost was we didn't just lose you know this this little eagle here that was stamped into his into his jacket but we also lost the arms and that's because there is simply a big black box just hanging here meant to look like his sleeves so if i go back and i put the yeah there we go the deco kit vanishing it back you'll see these arms here these sleeved arms and i know there's a bit of clipping here uh these sleeved arms are just a decal kit bashing because i didn't want his arms to be completely bare and this did the trick you know the, i i got this check this is actually in D, D terms for any of the real nerds out there this is a uh glamorous leather armor i think it's called and it's like it, it was meant to look really worn and ragged when carl got it so i i did did the, the, the this clipping the edges here looking like it's a little bit scuffed it and obviously the black color also looking slightly worn down and dry that is very intentional and then of course you know because Carl's backstory he is a rogue so you know it has to be edgy <laughs> the, the the burn marks here are because of that family burning incident rapier potions backpack because <laughs> See, I'm a firm believer in if your character has a backpack in D&D it should show somewhere the other characters didn't want the backpack but Carl does have a backpack. Bullets! More bullets! And as you've probably noticed, this is not an, ex an expression you can have in Hero Forge. I mean, soon, probably Hero Forge is probably, or uh, Face Customizer, sorry, is probably coming out any any week now, but uh, this is one of my more preferred combinations, which is simply the gaunt features with the normal heroic face. So combined, as you can see, with one expression being very neutral, having no eyebrows, and then the gaunt face being very angry underneath, you get this combination that looks like someone who is just kind of glaring, and that's a exactly what I want with Carl, because again, this guy, I wouldn't call him a murder hobo character, but you know, he, he does, uh, I, I do use intimidate a lot on this character. And just to quickly show how these arms work with these various, like if I pull this arm out, yeah, you'll see that this arm is holding these bullets over here. Then we have this other arm here, which I believe is holding a hairbrush. Now this was a trick I actually learned from a person on the Reddit called Ken the Human 6, which is if you clip a hairbrush into a shoulder properly, you will kind of get this like admiral looking esque 
you know, military shoulder thing. It's it's a bit fiddly to get it right, but it looks cool once you have it. I think the real uh, Pierre's de resistance of this piece, though, is... Uh, you may not have noticed it, but it is this beard. And <laughs> I know, I know it's not perfect, okay? But look, I've always lamented the fact, and I know why, because, you know, they're, they're waiting to release... We haven't got a new beard, except from the Pharaoh's beard, in, like, months and months and months. And I think that is because Hero Forge is waiting for face customers before we get it. But I've always wanted one of those typical squared beards, you know, and it, you can kind of get it with a goatee combination, which again requires two models to even get, but uh, even then you don't have anything along the jawline. So what I did was I clipped several horns into the face meticulously, one at a time, and I just kind of lined them along the chin here to get the closest thing I could to an actual squared beard in Hereforge. And I, I've done this, I've done this in a few different ways on three different models now, and I'll show you the three different examples and how they look. It is very fiddly to do this. So the, in, in this case, as opposed to Carl, the horns are slightly slightly enlarged so you know you kind of got to fiddle with the size of the horns and the positioning and it also kind of depends on your base post a little bit and in this case i've made the horns a little bit more pronounced so this time it covers the entire jawline and from the sides it looks kind of ishy if i think but from the front i mean try and tell me that this doesn't actually looks look like a really really good squared beard from the front i don't know man i think this technique is actually hidden gold until uh, face customizer comes out and for an example that is less pronounced than the one I previously showed. Here you have another example of it where the it doesn't stretch like even as far as the Carl one does and it's just a very very small beard like it's it's more than the usual and you can definitely see it but it's not nearly as pronounced as the one I just showed. And I know again it doesn't look perfect but in my opinion it looks good enough to warrant using it. Granted I mean if, if face customizer comes out in a week then showing you this trick is probably kind of pointless but anyway the horn is called the wispy antenna. I use this horn a lot for a lot of different things and it turns out it was once again the best option to make this kind of beard so uh, yeah if you want to try this out yourself good luck it is a pain in the ass but if you get it right it will look very cool. Anyway Yes, this is uh, Carl the Imperial Sniper. Enjoy, and until next time, we'll see who's next.